Good morning, people. Today we here with a fellow fancier of mine, from Anton Smat. We're gonna go through his journey, the first three years of his career of raising pigeons. Um, first of all, I wanna say thanks to Anton for letting me interview you. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, I wanna ask him some questions. This is more for the the fancier who starts pigeons to see how easy it is to start to raise pigeons, if it's easy or not. But anyhow, let's start with the first question. Um, Anton, how did you start your career of raising pigeons? Well, it is a story, but let's start by saying first, I have received some pigeons from my son-in-law, which I wanted to start racing with pigeons. And he gave me a few old birds to start breeding with, which I've started, but had no knowledge or understanding of what the racing and breeding is all about. Which I thought was very easy and started to breed and also think it was easy, but on the end of the day, we will discuss that now. We we'll come to a point. So what you're trying to say is you undermined the, the sport of pigeon racing. Yes, I've got no idea what the racing was all about and even the cost of what it was all about. But yes, I've started it and now we can continue. Um, how was your first year of racing pigeons without any help? Or my, no first, my first year of racing was not good at all. I have become a member of a union and also decided, well, this will be easy because all you have to do is breed the babies, get them to fly and enter them into the races and then it will be fine. Everything will be fine. But I've got a shock of my life, which is not as it is. How did you do in your first year of racing pigeons? First year of racing was very... Uh, unsatisfied, not happy at all because I did not have any idea of the right way to feed the birds, right medicines to give unto them and also not even know what is the right training and therefore I can tell you in the first five weeks of flying races out of the 60 babies I have Right? I've only had 20 left after the sixth week of racing. Did you continue? Did you stop racing that year? No, I immediately stopped because why? if I already lost 60 pigeons, I would also have lost the last 20, which I decided, no, that's not worth it to lose another, say, 20 pigeons and have nothing left for the next year to use as my old birds. So... I wasn't happy because uh -huh. I have no assistance or any um, help from any of those members that was in that association to help me or in that group to help me. Therefore, I really decided let me rather sit out. And I still was every night at the club when Pigeons was basketing and all that. I've never turned my back on that, but I did not have the Pigeons to be part of the races. And all that monies and stuff you paid, well, what happened to that? That's all lost because you pay the money to be a member of the association or the union and you cannot have that money back because it's not their fault or their responsibility if you cannot continue on taking part of the races. So you're trying to say you lost all that money at the end of the day? I've lost everything except for to be a still a, a member of the association, that's all. And then what are the, the fanciers of the club you were, or the federation you were, what did they say of your birds? Well, on the end of the day, many times when I arrived there and they looked at my birds and they said to me, oh, you were busy breeding budgies, <laughs> which was a joke. But on the end of the day, I felt very bad because while these people are sitting with top races, 
federation winners, club winners, union winners, you can name it whatever you want. And they are really good fans, yes. people that know something about pitches. Not one of them has ever came to me and said to me, is there something we can help you with? Is there a way that we can help you to become uh, a part of it? So yes, on the end of the day, I was a single person on my own trying to be a fancier, <laughs> which I thought it was easier, but sorry, I have um, learned my lesson. Um, um, Anton, so how do you feel, uh, what do you think about, how do you feel about moving forward in the um, racing pigeon sport? Well, at that moment, after the end of the season, I've decided, well, I'd rather sell all my pigeons, get rid of it, because um, if I look at the top fanciers in the club or in the union, which I saw the results because every Thursday night the results was given by the previous uh, week's races and my name never appeared once on any of those lists. I've decided, well, that's it. I'm not um, going to fly or be a part in the next year. I'm going to sell everything and get rid of my pigeons and lost all that desire to be um, a real pigeon racer and now you feel like there's nothing for you so what you're trying to say is in that result you saw you would never see your name in the first 10 or first even first 100 because you were never there yes correct i've never been in the first 50 never mind i don't even want to count out let's say 400 because if there's how many birds maybe sometimes 5,000 6,000 birds at one time sometimes 10,000 bits and if I think I could make in the first 10,000 I would have been happy but at that moment there was no chance because there was no more bits that I could use to be a part of the race and that would obviously be for the next 10 years if you don't get help you'll fly like that for the next 10 15 years maybe exactly because why like I said the, the racing pigeons had okay, improved improved so much that uh, you can never be a part of that races if you do not know what is it all about what what is the needs of the, the, the pigeons what is the needs of how to get to the top and to start from the start to breed a proper pigeon yes that's correct so we did yeah so and then i on that moment did you want to continue raising pigeons or not no not at all I've lost all my interest, interest in the pigeons and the only reason why I would have kept, kept the pigeons is because I have got them free from my son-in-law which his father had out of those birds was champions. He has won many races with that same um, pigeons that he gave on to me. And yeah, but he had the knowledge and the wisdom and the know-how how to do that. But me, I've lost all my interests. I wanted to get rid of all. So, um, Anton, now we're coming back to my first video I made, saying uh, if you don't do your proper preparations, you're gonna have what good birds in your loft. If you don't follow the correct procedures and correct steps, you will not breed a winner. Yes, is that what you're trying to say? That's hundred percent correct. Because why even to pair up your birds, you need to know what. Uh, pedigrees you want to put together or what type of birds you want to, better, to put together to get a better uh, result of what a pigeon will do and preparation means also the medication the feeding of the birds how to get to that point where you can enter your, your pigeon into a, a race without being concerned if you're going to lose the pigeons or they're going to be good pigeons you're still going to lose pigeons doesn't matter how good it is, but to lose 20 or 40 or 60 birds in one race or in two races, that means you don't, you need to get the right start, which you have spoken about in the beginning. Start with the right things, what to do and how to do it. Okay, and then 
What happened? I see you still have your lofts there. So what happened? What made you change your mind? Well, on the end of a day, I've met a person in the name of Oki, which was from another um, organization or another union, which passed my house and came and spoke to me and asked me if I don't want to um, come and fly in that new association, which I explained unto my my situation, which he says, well, okay, in that case, I will come and assist you in the first three months to start your get going and on the right track. And that made me again feel like I want to continue to be a part of the racing. So what you're trying to say, you got help? Yes. I got help from the right person, a person who much older than me <coughs> and who was prepared. Sorry to say, I will help you so that you will be become a better racer, better person, knowing more about pigeons, understand more about the pigeons, how to change everything which I thought was normal, which I thought was good, but well, on the end of the day, he showed me what, actually, I don't know anything about pigeons. I maybe thought I know about pigeons, but no idea what it is all about now in this racing seasons and preparations and know something about birds all that okay before we go any further i'm gonna i want to cut the video here what we're gonna do on the next episode is we're well, gonna tell me what happened the second year with you in the new federation now and and help from help from umoki yes and see what happens see what it's all about mm. So in the next episode, you're going to tell us that? Yes, definitely, because now I think I can speak now more um, openly and understanding about the pigeons and know what's going on, which I think, I just want to say this, I did not do bad after that. Everything just started to become better. I okay, went better. upwards. Yeah. Upwards, yes. That's, that's it. Okay. But thank you guys. Please like and subscribe this channel. We're still going to do interviews with him, Anton. There's still a couple of interviews with his, um, from the start up to now. You would be amazed what happened on the last year of, the, of his last season of Racing Pigeons from Anton. After he got a proper help and what, what. But please, like, subscribe, turn the notifications on in the bottom corner. And every time we're going to upload a movie or a video or whatever, you're going to be notified. And then you can see what's happening. On a later stage, we're going to take you into the breeding cages to show you what changes he did from what was up to now. So please guys, thanks for watching the, this video. Thanks for your support. I hope to see you in the future. Thanks. Thank you very much.